So here's a tutorial that I'm actually surprised I wasn't able to find instantly online because I think it's a pretty useful one, if not pretty basic, and that's how to create this additional uh, noise on the side of a self-fractured object. Uh, this is using a cloud's texture as the displacement. Um, you know, and it's actually a pretty basic setup once you know how to do it. Uh, it's just insane that <laughs> it took me so long to figure out. So initially, I actually had created a uh, displacement map uh, out of the texture. Um, so if we go into shading here and we look at it in textured view, we can look at this little object I made as a test, which basically uses the object coordinates to uh, get a quadratic sphere. Um, and then we plugged that as a basically a map uh, or a mask into how high uh, a certain amount of displacement should be added. I ended up going ahead and trying to apply this to all these objects, but it just it didn't look right. Uh, especially the problem was with these bigger pieces, it would look fine uh, and the edges would all connect to the edge. But when we got to these smaller pieces, uh, all the edges were uh, bouncing off of the side of these objects and that was no good. So the solution that I ended up finding was actually pretty simple and like all things good, it actually comes down to modifiers. I'm sure you could do this in geometry nodes, but I'm almost certain that setting this up in modifiers would be quicker uh, because it's just really three different modifiers. Let's jump into it, shall we? Uh, so the very first modifier we're going to go ahead and add is a subdivision surface modifier over here. Here I have it set to 4. Um, just know if you make your uh, texture smaller, uh, you're going to want to increase the resolution before you add the displacement texture and not after. Um, this will just give it more room to actually displace parts of the object. Second thing to do is add a displacement modifier. Now the displacement modifier here is where all this actual noise is coming from and instead of applying the noise to the entire object we're actually going to select the interior vertex group. Uh, this is something that was really the key to figuring out how to do this. And now I probably could do it in the texture, but why do it if you can do it separately? Um, so just set your vertex group to interior. It should be created when you do a cell fracture. And then change the strength to your liking and go ahead and add or create a texture. For me, I ended up using a clouds texture just because I thought it looked the best on these bigger pieces, though a Voronoi texture or another, um, you know, just noise-based texture would work just fine. Finally, the last modifier you're going to want to possibly add is one more subdivision surface. Uh, this one with adaptive sub well, words, adaptive subdivision is going to actually smooth out the object. So if you want a smoother edge to your object, uh, that will do it. it. It kind of, for me, I felt it was giving it a little bit too much of a cloth-like look. Uh, and I wasn't happy with that. Uh, obviously, these pieces don't have it applied. But so I went ahead and I actually disabled it. And I found that these sharper edges, but more noise, just looked better than, than the default. So I was pretty happy with that, how that turned out. Anyway, that, that's it. That's super quick tutorial, I know, but it's crazy that it took me so long uh, to figure this out. But hey, this is all a learning experience. Um, this is actually a very common technique that's used uh, in Houdini when you're creating some sort of shattered object. Um, it allows you to create a much more realistic looking uh, pieces of debris than just having it being flat sides with a texture on them. Of course, now that we've added this, we could actually go ahead and add a texture onto the front of or onto the sides of these and it would look just fine. So that's another plus for doing it in this method. Anyway, guys, if you like this video, go ahead and leave a like. I've been on hiatus for a bit, but I'm actually going to start making videos again. And they're going to, you know, be probably a little bit more complex than this one. Over the weekend, I actually plan to recreate this shot from Disney's uh, The Mandalorian only in Blender uh, and only in a couple days. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, I'm hoping it turns out well. Uh, but if you're interested in seeing that, uh, go ahead and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.